I'm going to start saying like the necessity of the airbags, where I'm going to talk about like why do we really need airbags, and I'm going to give you also a, a short introduction of airbags and its types and something like that. And the next topic is going to be the history of airbags. Of course, it's an interesting topic, but it's going to be short, like some years and some companies which are uh, being involved and so on. And the third uh, topic, uh, uh, most interesting for us would be like the FE modeling of the airbag systems, the finite element modeling of the airbag systems, where we can uh, like uh, deeply explore all the valid uh, airbag components and like how can we uh, build uh, them into like some valid uh, finite element models and also i'm going to show you some uh, use case industrial use case uh, where we can see how they build the airbag systems and also i can i am going to explain you like shortly on the types of airbag folding how the airbag is being folded before it, it has it is being inflated and placed inside the housing and lastly i'm going to uh, discuss about the the bright job opportunities in this field, of course, it's important. At last, uh, like uh, as Nageshwari told, like we can have a, a short question and answer uh, session and you can uh, write your questions and I would try to answer them. Okay, so now to start with, uh, of course, so uh, why do we need airbags? So in today's world, like as you know, like, uh, the use of locomotives has increased widely. Thus, the number of accidents also increase. Yeah, of course, the uh, occupants need some kind of protection in order to protect them from the injuries, accidents, and so on. The industry has like come up with various systems to protect the occupants. Uh, uh, one of the major systems, like the uh, this system is collectively called as occupant safety systems, of course. I would say like, why do we need these systems would be like in order to like uh, decelerate the human rapid acceleration at the event of accident. Uh, like if there are uh, there's an accident if it is being like huge acceleration the human body also moves with the uh, with the uh, car or automobile like uh, during the accident event and it's important to decelerate human body and bring the uh, bring down the acceleration uh, from the uh, to prevent the injury of the human occupant so this is why we need airbags of course and there is also other occupant safety systems like uh, seat belts of course and uh, also uh, we have some of uh, children they have some child safety devices and so on so if you if you if uh, so in this uh, topic we are going deep inside airbags so let's uh, go into some types of airbags and where they are placed and so on this is a short sketch like uh, of inside a car you can see like here we have uh, a passenger airbag this is called a passenger airbag uh, the passenger airbag is one of the biggest airbag like it's almost like 120 to 130 uh, liters in volume so together with this driver airbag which is the other one it's uh, both are called as frontal airbags because it's more it, it protects the occupant in the front row for the frontal crash the difference the major difference as you can see like it's the passenger airbag it's more of a trapezoidal shape when it, it's completely inflated and the driver airbag it's more like a circular shape uh, when it's being inflated and this is one thing. And um, apart from this, the passenger airbag, of course, it's uh, passenger airbag is placed inside the uh, passenger airbag housing and it uh, requires a huge force to break the uh, seam and cover and to come out. So it uh, requires a lot of uh, pressure to open it. So we would like go through how uh, uh, we are developing the uh, finite element simulations, like how they build the model and so on in the upcoming slides. And apart from this, the driver airbag is used to protect the uh, occupant, the uh, driver, the driver of it. So, uh, of course, it's more or less similar to the passenger airbag, but it's circular in shape, as I said. And it's like uh, like lesser in volume. It uh, might range from 80 to 90 liters. The, so the passenger airbag, as I told, it's 120 liters. It's the, one of the biggest airbags in the car. Uh, apart from this, we have uh, like small airbags for the frontal crash, like knee airbag and some... Uh, cars have seat belt airbags and uh, so these also protect for, uh, from frontal crash these are uh, all small airbags to protect some knees and uh, knee injuries and uh, uh, some injuries of the uh, like because of seat uh, seat belt tightening and so on so apart from this we have this uh, side airbag which is uh, mounted on the a pillar b pillar and c pillar of the car like side like it comes down like a blind it protects the occupant on the side crash 
on the event of site crash and um, how the uh, window screen opens up something like that so so when the airbag inflates it just goes down like a blind uh, like a screen blind so uh, it just covers up the windows and so on so the uh, occupant on the side like uh, are protected completely something like that and this is one thing and apart from this we have this uh, pedestrian airbag Pedestrian airbag is the only air protects the occupant outside walking on the street, something like that. So this airbag is inflated on the bonnet area. So when the uh, pedestrian walking outside like gets hit on the car and uh, this airbag protects the pedestrian, uh, like uh, when the pedestrian falls on the bonnet, this airbag protects the pedestrian. Uh, these are like a brief introduction on the types of airbag. Of course, we have, apart from this, we have a lot of uh, small side airbags uh, here and there and modify they make new changes for airbags and there are a lot of new advances and so on. So, but these are the basic types. Of, uh, yeah, as I said, the next next topic would be the history of airbags. And um, back in 1968, uh, like the world's first electromechanical automotive uh, airbag system was developed, of course. That means like all these airbags are uh, controlled by an, all these easy units like are triggered by a sensor on the bumper either on the bumper for the frontal crash or some uh, sensors on the uh, door on the uh, for the side crash so uh, this is being controlled by the ecu and uh, this ecu unit in turn triggers the inflator which inflates the airbag. So this is how the uh, airbag system works. And the first company to incorporate like uh, this airbag system in 1961 in in their cars. And uh, in 1994, uh, TRW uh, started like uh, testing airbag inflators in full-fledged and they are now one of the like uh, leading uh, manufacturers of airbag systems. So uh, this is like a brief introduction on airbags. Now let's deep dive into the necessity of finite element modeling of airbags, and how we should model airbags, and what are the importance of uh, choosing a right model for uh, airbag simulations. So why do we need to do this uh, finite element modeling of airbags? Yeah, uh, so of course, uh, we have this uh, manufacturer like TRW or uh, some other manufacturer of uh, airbag system they are trying to manufacture an airbag we have like a special norms like euro norms for europe and uh, some national highway safety uh, norms for uh, us and like so on so they have to somehow produce their components and systems with their standards so for this they have to test their airbag systems uh, like with the uh, various design configurations at uh, various phases and uh, at, with various design changes at various time. So for this, they can't do like a component level uh, real time testing each time because this is like highly nonlinear testing and this requires like a, a huge cost, incurs huge cost. So, so that's why FT modeling uh, like came into consideration. So they do all the design changes and uh, they try to, what they do is they all, uh, they do all the design changes and they uh, simulate airbag and they try to compare the velocity of the uh, dummy uh, being correlated with the test. So this is what happens. So what they do is, as I said, like uh, just to repeat it. So they try to build a FE model and they try to uh, do a, a simulation uh, validation against a dummy and they try to uh, compare the dummy uh, velocity acceleration displacement with the test this is what they do so let's go uh, like briefly on uh, how to model like an airbag system and what are the components of airbag system so an basic airbag system of course has an airbag housing and an inflator a seam a cover and a belt and the important part like the airbag fabric itself so these are the important things to model inside an airbag uh, let's go on the first airbag housing uh, it's generally a plastic component it's it's important to uh, like model it with the plastic components because even the force exerted on the plastic like the deformation of the plastic also matters because there might be differences of pressure and like the unfolding effect of airbag the disturbance because of the plastic so it we can't model the airbag housing with the rigid so we have to model with the plastic and we uh, since it's really a thin layer so uh, we usually model with shell elements the 2d shell elements uh, the second component is the inflator inflator is the device which inflates like uh, pushes air into the airbag it has a simple inflating mechanism uh, so some chemicals that just uh, inject uh, air into the airbag so 
this can be just a rigid component, but this has to be modern. So this is where the airbag is going to be uh, tied into it. So the airbag is like uh, going to stick onto the inflator and it, it's going to inflate on its own. This is one thing. And the seam is uh, like the portion where the airbag is stitched. So this has more leakage when compared to the top layer of the fabric, airbag fabric. So the seam has more leakage. So it's important to model the seam with uh, different leakage parameters. Seam should be in different component and we should like uh, give a different uh, fabric leakage for uh, the seam. And the cover and build, of course, uh, airbag is placed inside the passenger airbag housing, as I said. Uh, for the passenger airbag, it's, uh, of course, it's uh, placed inside the passenger airbag housing, covered by a uh, top layer cover and it's covered by a belt. So like a thin fabric belt. This has to be also model, of course, and the braking simulation of cover and belt is also important. A proper failure, like a braking of cover and belt, uh, like the tar simulation of the cover and belt is also important. So we have to do some a separate simulation for this to in order to test uh, how this is working perfectly and so on. And uh, the last one, uh, the important one is, of course, the airbag fabric. So the airbag fabric uh, is uh, like the major uh, element of the uh, airbag. So uh, we do like different kinds of testing. Uh, this is a normal fabric, of course, uh, but in usual fabric, it has like uh, two threads going on the opposite way. So it's an orthotropic material property. So if you stretch in one direction, it has different loading and unloading properties. And if you stretch in another direction, you, if you have a uh, different uh, loading and unloading property. So it's an orthotropic material, of course, and the material uh, which we provide to this airbag should be like in two different direction. It's usually, it's completely different. Uh, there are various tests uh, which, which have been done to generate this uh, loading and unloading properties of this uh, airbag fabric. One such test is picture frame test. As you see, this is how they do. They try to stretch the airbag fabrics uh, and uh, generate the uh, load versus displacement in both the directions. And they provide as a material property for the fabric which we are using in the, uh, this is one part. And apart from this, we also need the uh, angle at which the threads are being placed. So let's say this thread is placed at, at uh, angle at 90 degrees. So we have to even uh, like uh, uh, like input, uh, given an input as an angle 90 degree for the material. So, and apart from this, we also have to give the leakage, which is again an important thing uh, for the airbag. Like you, uh, so how is the airbag being correlated, you can ask. So differ airbags like uh, produce more velocity uh, by the, uh, on the dummy, on the uh, dummy and and like more the leakage, there will be less acceleration and uh, velocity of the tummy. So we should try to correlate the uh, leakage parameters so that uh, we can reduce the velocity, displacement and acceleration. So that's how we correlate the airbags. Of course, apart from this, we have vents like leakages uh, called as fabric leakage. And we have one more leakage called as vent leakage, which is in mostly in passenger airbag. So uh, since the passenger airbag is really big, uh, as you can see, as I said, it's 120 to 130 liters. This uh, fabric uh, leakage is not more sufficient. So the dummy is the uh, uh, occupant which is being placed here. So when he hits the airbag and if the pressure is too much, he gets pushed so fast and it gets injured, uh, like a neck injury, neck injury or something like that. So for this case, like we have two uh, vents or uh, four vents somehow, uh, on the sides, it depends on the design correlations. This is also being correlated, like the vent sizes are also being correlated uh, during this uh, testing and simulation. And uh, these uh, simulation results are then uh, at last like uh, manufactured and like tested on uh, real disk, uh, tested, uh, test specimens, and then, and then the manufacturing, they start. So that's how the process goes on. And so, this is like a test model which we prepared for uh, uh, like a, a child safety device. So this uh, model where I can show you like uh, how we have correlated the form of the, this is a door and this is like, so this is the child seat. Uh, we try to code, uh, build a finite element model for the door form and uh, we try to correlate the uh, uh, child seat and we try to build a test specimen 
and we try to go like the foam, door foam. So this is like a finite element model being like, uh, this is the real test case, and this is the finite element model, and we try to correlate as you see. So this is the finite element model, which we are going to create for the airbag is going to be exactly at the moment of impact, like we can, uh, we would like mostly uh, correlate the velocity of this velocity or the slide of this test specimen on the seat for, in this case. And so, which is uh, the dummy, I would say, and then we would correlate the door form. So this is going to be similar in airbag case too. So uh, this is a sample, uh, like an example for of how we are going to replace the real test case with the finite element model. And uh, yeah, so this is how it's going to be. And apart from this, like what are the various simulation which we, we, are, we are going to do like uh, during the airbag simulation and so on. So element level simulation. So of course we have to check uh, each element, like uh, which element we have to choose and how the material properties impacting the element and so on. We are like, we can do like one element test. So we uh, give some uh, some uniaxial loads and test like uh, compared with the tensile loads and check how the element is reacting, uh, same material property. So this is called as one element simulation. And uh, next to it, it's the component level simulation. Component level simulation is mostly like uh, taking this component and checking out like uh, giving a load on this area or something, for example, and checking out how the component is behaving with the uh, same material property apart from this of course as i said the picture frame test for the fabric like uh, if you want like orthotropic property you need to do it like to get different restraint curves on two different direction and apart from this the system level validation like if you want uh, the complete uh, uh, like the frontal crash should be simulated for the euro norms or other norms we need a system level validation we need to build all the uh, car components with the rigid body uh, make the airbag model like input the airbag model with the proper fabric and the plastic properties of, for the housing and so on and we need to do the simulation for this this is more like system level validation this is more for the norms i would say and the linear impact testing inside airbag. So linear impact testing is more like so, uh, the side airbag, as you see, like uh, it's going to be the side uh, side impact is for the side impact and the head is over here and it's more of linear impact, you can see that. So uh, how they test is they, they keep, uh, like they give a, like a spear with a linear force and they test uh, deceleration, acceleration and deceleration of the airbag uh, while it's getting inflated. So that's how they test it. And so we need to simulate that. And that is one uh, kind of simulation. It's called linear impact testing for side airbag. And opening force of power simulation is um, more as I said before. So for the passenger airbag, uh, the passenger airbag is being placed inside several covers and it should break all the seams and come out. So we need a proper design of the seam layer uh, in order to break uh, open and bring out the passenger airbag as perfectly in shape as possible. This is uh, one kind of simulation which, which is really important for a passenger airbag, like in order to uh, bring it out with a proper shape and so on. So this simulation then should be done. And apart from this, we have the frontal cache simulation, of course, and the side airbag and uh, side crash and rollover simulations, of course, the total body simulation for the norms. Yeah, that's it. Uh, and we do also like a lot of uh, component level simulations, like uh, for seat belt, uh, retractor uh, testing simulation and so on. So these are the basic simulation. And yeah, uh, this uh, is uh, like a, a small use case, which I try to show you is like, uh, so this, uh, at this case, this is the dummy and uh, uh, the point of accident, like there's no airbag and nothing in there. So the, you can see the head being impacted on the windshield and uh, the like body is like hitting on the uh, steering and so on. But uh, you see like uh, with the seat belt and uh, like a pretensioner, uh, a pretensioner is a device like uh, at the point of impact, like the, it's built inside the seat belt. Uh, so it uh, tries to pull back the dummy a little bit uh, behind so that, uh, and also it loosens up the dummy a little bit so that it gives like the same airbag effect and uh, it also decelerates the dummy during the accident. So the problem with this, it, it creates injuries on this portion, like uh, on the portion of the seat belt. So that's why we have uh, like a combination seat belt and airbag, of course. And so seat belts, like it uh, reduces the acceleration, it doesn't pull and the airbag, like it inflates and reduces. This is a perfect model. 
of course but uh, still we need some more uh, like a deceleration so they uh, include all the three like seat belt pretensioner and the airbag so uh, this is like uh, the uh, most cars use this concept like uh, they use the seat belt with the pretensioner and the airbag um, this is like a, a small displacement versus time graph at the point of impact so you can see at this uh, that would be of course a first peak on the airbag like uh, when the uh, dummy impacts the airbag there would be a first peak and this peak is like uh, the touch peak so this is where the uh, velocity is like uh, going down uh, drastically and then uh, again uh, it's back and you know like when it goes inside again uh, at the point it gets bounces back so this is the point uh, of bounce back so uh, after this it's going uh, goes again with the smooth curve so this is a usual curve which we are uh, getting now so what we have to do is we will have this curve we, even from the test and we need to correlate this uh, test and uh, uh, the simulation curve together how we correlate we correlate with the leakage of the airbag so when we increase the leakage this uh, peaks like differs like uh, the point where the peak happening and the like the velocity uh, and the magnitude of the velocity and so on so uh, that's how like so uh, essentially we should control the leakage of the airbag so the important thing is at last as you can see like the material of the airbag is most important thing uh, apart from this like i can say uh, how do we build airbag uh, like uh, simulation models there are a lot of models for this usually the most basic model is control volume model um, the concept behind this like applying the like calculating the load based on the load versus displacement graph from the inflator testing so what they do is they test the inflators inflate the airbag uh, and then they get some uh, load versus uh, displacement versus time graphs load versus time graphs and then uh, we can give it as an input for this control volume method so this like applies some equal pressure on all elements and more or less this is the problem with this control volume is like backers would be more stiff this is like uh, i would say like, uh, like 40 percentage approximation but apart from this we have this corpuscular particle method this is more like a smooth particle hydrodynamics of course but uh, this has particle level simulation more like a particle hydrodynamics so there are they are modeled not with gas inside so they are uh, the gas is modeled with uh, particles so you can see the particles moving here and there after the impact and you can also see the leakage uh, uh, visibly like after the modeling uh, through the vents and through the airbag fabric and so on so visually it's really good and also the uh, accuracy is really good in these two cases and apart from this we have this wagner psk for the control volume and chemkin which will deep the when we are like talking about the course of course uh, so we need to uh, we can't simply push the airbag inside the bag or passenger or bag housing of course so we need to somehow you know wrap um, uh, wrap it and fold it uh, and place it into into the housing which they do it in the industry so we have to even simulate this process uh, otherwise the nodes would be really stretched the nodes would be sticking here and there so uh, what simulation tools we do is like we do this uh, kind of folds folding simulations and uh, we try to give some relaxation to the folding uh, folded airbag and we try to place this folded airbag inside the housing and then we deploy this airbag so that's how like airbag like uh, so that's uh, really a proper uh, modeling of the folded airbag so for this folding we have like various kinds of fold of folds like a single tuck fold double tuck fold a zigzag and roll fold and cover wrapping simulation is separate so roll fold is mostly for the uh, side airbag you can see that so side airbag like they just keep uh, they say it as knife and they keep it over here and they just uh, fold it or top uh, and then they give some dynamic relaxation inside the housing they move it inside the housing and then they cover it uh, with some belts and then um, that's how that's it like so they run the dynamic uh, simulation so this is more for the uh, side airbags the roll folds and apart from this we have the zigzag tuck folds which are for the side airbags and for the passenger airbags and the cover wrapping simulation is also important of course so placing the cover uh, like with the geometric model it's not enough so there should be proper spacing like how it's however it's appearing in the real case it should be the same way so that's why we we do this cover wrapping simulation also apart from this we have three basic entities to learn about uh, these notes after uh, the folding it would be really stretched 
and uh, this these nodes would have been like um, have different sizes of elements like it's unrealistic and during the deployment these nodes would uh, stick inside each other and it would uh, cause some like irregular effects which is uh, not true in the real case real test cases so this would like probably probably affect the peaks at high cases so for this we have this concept called as airbag reference geometry which is uh, in the name itself as you can see it's a reference for the airbag so this is nothing but the exact dimensions of the airbag so this is nothing but the airbag which we built over here is with an element size of 5 element, 5 mm, like all over the airbag. So FE model, like initial model before folding, it's just the nodes are copied and they are just placed inside the airbag uh, reference geometry. And then uh, if you apply it to the uh, uh, inflator model, then uh, after simulation, it, it won't give any this wrinkling effects, like sticking effects. Um, on the airbag so that's that's the major need of this airbag reference geometry and uh, so why do we need this dynamic relaxation of course after each folds uh, let's say we do uh, one tuck fold uh, or one fold of the passenger airbag folding and the nodes would be stressed of course as you know so we need to do some relaxation for the airbags you know the nodes are really stressed and stretched up so there should be no stretching no uh, like sticking of nodes when the airbag is being deployed so we need to do of course this um, relaxation simulation so for this we do this dynamic relaxation simulation so this is nothing but like um, how we do this we try to apply high damping and then we try to reduce the damping as low as uh, possible so it's like uh, vibration but high uh, at high uh, frequency and it gets on reducing uh, uh, unto zero something like that and apart from this of course like uh, we do the folds and between each folds as i said we do the dynamic relaxation uh, like a small overview how we use the how we develop the finite element model and how we simulate the airbag and what are the different models available uh, available inside for building the airbag systems and for the deployment and so on and how complicated like you can uh, simply think uh, the simulation is going to be and uh, the, what is the important thing to correlate an airbag, like why it's uh, important to correlate an airbag and how you correlate, like of course, as I said, you need to uh, work on this leakage parameters for the passenger airbag, it's vent and driver airbag also has a vent and they both have seam leakage and the fabric leakage, of course. So we have to uh, work on the fabric leakage for uh, proper um, correlation of the peaks. So this is what we would be working on and apart from this yeah that's it from my side and I, lastly as i said i can talk about the job opportunities like uh, in this field it's really huge as you know it's highly nonlinear crash analysis domain and like there are a lot of automotive uh, manufacturers looking forward and since they require like a huge uh, r and d's research and development equipment for this testing equipment they give um, for separate companies like with them who manufacture the airbags like TRW, Takata, K safety systems, and uh, AutoLive, and so on. So um, these companies, what they do is they try to test the airbag, simulate the airbag, and they just give the system, uh, like a system to the automotive uh, companies, and they use the systems. So uh, Britex Roimer is like a uh, child safety manufacturer. So they manufacture child safety. And apart from this, there are a lot of uh, other manufacturers too, uh, like for uh, airbags. And, but these are the, like, so yeah, that's it from my side. Like,